The blackout in Spain showed the world why we need more electrical engineers. My name is Nenid. I'm an engineering manager with my master's in electrical engineering. I've been working in the power space for the past 10 years. And I just want to talk about the bigger problem that is on display here. So of course the people in Spain and Portugal are suffering. They're without power. You know, you can't even use cards anymore. Obviously you can't charge your phone. You can't plug in your electric car. That's kind of a new age thing. So the grid that we've created as humans is the largest network ever devised by people people and it is fragile in the sense that many many things need to be upgraded I'm not gonna discuss what happened because they don't really know yet maybe it was a massive fault and it led to a rolling blackout kind of like a domino that starts to roll and that's what happened in New York in 2003 here in the US uh, maybe it was a cybersecurity attack or maybe it was a physical thing we don't really know what might have happened all of these things though need to be improved upon and this is where engineers and specifically electrical engineers come into play this grid needs not only electrical engineers but also we need people to construct the sites this is a substation behind me they've got transmission lines coming up overhead everything needs to be updated and repaired and restored so i started my career as a substation design engineer just to show you how old this grid is i'll tell you this quick story and we we're working for a client in the northeast uh, united states and i had to do a relay replacement for a station that was built in 1934. <laughs> that just shows you how old that was. And this was about 10 years ago. So it took about 80 plus years to replace that one relay. And there are so many instances of this. The grid needs to be modernized. On top of all of that, we are looking at incredible demand for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Just look at everything that you see coming online. Car revolution has started to happen. They are demanding in this country that a certain percentage of cars be electric in the next 10 years. Well, where is that gonna come from? Where is that power coming from? You need to have a sound foundation to be able to charge those vehicles. We have everything coming from data centers now, right? Your phones, everything is connected to that. You have robotics coming online. All of these new technologies need more power. There's an incredible statistic that I saw as I went down this rabbit hole that in 1995, there were about 14,000 electrical engineers that graduated in the US. Guess what? In 2024, about 30 years later, there were about the same amount. The demand on this grid here has increased two, three X that amount and will continue to increase. So we need more and more electrical engineers. I also know this because I'm the one who is hiring people and I've noticed that sometimes it's really, really hard to find engineers. And most people that are technically sound are going into technology and nothing wrong with that, but also this grid here is forgotten about right now. So the major opportunity, especially if you haven't picked a major yet, if you're still in college, and if you're an electrical engineer already, I commend you. But the major opportunity, I think, for the next 10 to 20 to 30 years is gonna be in the power space, which is why I'm really thankful to be in this space. Not only does it represent incredible stability, but also it represents the cutting edge of technology now because we've got things coming online. We have renewables coming online. We have smart grid, meaning everything is gonna be metered from now on. Everything, there's distributed generation. We have SMRs, small modular reactors. Those are basically small nuclear plants that we're gonna to have to install in order to meet this demand. In Spain and Europe, they're relying on renewable energy much as we are here in the US. It's becoming more and more of a thing. Nothing wrong with renewables, but it's not consistent power. So you see and you hear about industries such as nuclear being really blacklisted. However, we do need consistent power, right? If the clouds come in, so you see here, I'm in the sunlight right now, I've got solar power. If I get in the shade, no power. So we need something consistent, but that in itself makes the system more and more complex. We need more people to solve these problems. We need more people to do the calculations. There are so many roles. So the ones that I can think top of my head are, you've got substation physical designers. You've got people that need to lay out this uh, the station behind me. You've got protection controls, people that need to create the relays uh, that tell the, these breakers behind me to tell them how to trip. You've got skater controls, you've got communications. You have planners, you've got people doing studies of all sorts of, th of, all sorts of devices. Then you've got these transmission lines that are, where is it? These transmission lines that are behind me. You actually need civil engineers to construct those. So it's not just electrical. This is a huge demand for engineers in general however as I've been discussing this space here is not is not uh, getting the full attention of students so if you're a student watching this I implore you to take a look into this space because the opportunity is tremendous in the past 
the grid was very simple. You might have a coal generator or you might have hydro that would turn a turbine and the power would come through linearly. But as I've just described, all of these things coming online, whether it's wind energy or solar or even these small modular reactors, all these different things, they're natural gas, all these different things coming online are adding more complexities to the grid. In addition, the power that we're using is no longer linear, meaning it's not just the fact that you're turning your lights on and they use a certain amount of wattage. No, everything now has non-linear loads associated with it, meaning these are electronics. They turn on and off many times per second and those things go haywire on the power grid so there are power quality issues there's so much research being done in just power in general that even if you didn't want to work on the field in a substation there are so many jobs you can get doing research or doing design work there's maintenance there's construction there's planning there's conceptual there's you have to you have to create scopes to make these all these systems there's even there's massive legal teams lawyers involved in all this so they're everywhere right uh, you have real estate you know look at the station behind me you know who, how do they figure this out somebody had to buy the real estate and typically the power company buys that so there are all these different forces that have to come together in order to make a project like this happen and guess what the more of these hiccups that we have, the more in demand we will need for brightly, brightly skilled young people. We have so many people that are close to retirement in this industry. And what I'm trying to do as a manager is trying to get some of their knowledge passed down onto our younger generations that are coming in. So I always try to facilitate that within my team. And as these people retire, the knowledge goes with them. So we have to do a good job of facilitating this. So now is a good time if you haven't already considered power take a look at it don't take my word for it go do your own research i'm just a guy making youtube videos but i do know a little bit about this space so whatever happens in spain i hope that the people are okay and that we can learn from this and hopefully we can avoid some of these blackouts in the future however uh my gut feeling is that we'll probably see more and more of these things because the grid is becoming more complex, more things need to be protected. The cybersecurity element of all this is actually even tremendous. So th that is a huge field in and of itself. And now they're not saying it was anything related to that. Uh, you know, there might even be political things, which we're not gonna get into. That's not the point of why I'm making videos. You never really know what's behind all of this, but do know that there is demand, and I, I would venture to say pretty much in every country that you live in, uh, power is going to be a huge talking point and how we deliver that power in fact uh, still has not changed we still use transmission lines we use substations this is a system under immense pressure and we need our brightest folks to come and enter this space so if you've thought about engineering and electrical engineering then please do consider the power industry you really will not go wrong in your career you will always always uh, find a way to contribute you'll have employment opportunities room for growth etc etc and this is really something that you can make a full career out of to where you can be involved from the minute that you start to the minute that you retire for all you engineers and electrical engineers watching thank you for what you do let me know if i miss something and while you're at it subscribe for more real engineering talk and career advice that i believe will help you out